Hare Krishna. Look at you. Uh, um, uh, uh, friends and peers um, and all right. Uh, I know most of you have yeah, some distinguished guests. I particularly want to point out Krishna Creek, who saw his right hand man for a couple of decades. And um, I'm glad you're here. And um, oh, we still have people joining, so just wait a moment. We'll turn the beeping out. Sounds like we're in a different story. <laughs> yeah. We're good, Leila. Okay, so, um, Sada Puja left us over a decade ago. Uh, his wife is here somewhere. There she is. There you are. And, oh, there you are. And uh, Deva Rita with her good friend and my good friend, Laura, that you're here. And um, we have, uh, also in the front row, um, we have the Metas who do Sala Puja, appreciated. We recently, it's about a year or so ago, spoke at your book club on Sala Puja. So, um, Sada Puta was uh, a genius. There's no other way to describe to describe it. Um, he had all the qualities of a genius. Amazing ability to learn, uh, a photographic memory, and of course, eccentricities, which every genius must have. Mm -hmm. it, it goes with it. And he understood things in a deeper way. Yet, he also just didn't want to understand it. He wanted to share it. And that was a very important point of his life, how to present the deeper secrets he was learning. And I might add, he never stopped learning. And that's a very important point here, because we're, today we're beginning with his first major book. He had done some papers before in the uh, monograph series for the Life Comes From Life Conference, which he and I spoke at in 1977, a month before Prabhupada left. Uh, and, and some of his views changed over time. This is his first book we're doing. That doesn't mean what's in there, he would even see as engraved in stone, but he saw it as a jumping off point for further realizations. And sometimes he'd claw back on realizations and he'd expand realizations. This is what a true spiritual seeker and a true scientist does. So we're going to have a series of events. We'll put it on the screen later in which we're going to be discussing having a monthly sessions on uh, Sada Puta's books. And the first book we're beginning with is his first book, Mestic, Me Mechanistic and Non-Mechanistic Science, which, by the way, is my favorite book of his. Um, uh, some of the others are very notable to me. Uh, Garden Science has some of the most brilliant essays in it. Uh, Mysteries of the Sacred Universe, Pierce the Veil and the Fifth Canto. I mean, that's so many amazing books, but mechanistic to me was my favorite. Um, so um, we'd like you to visit the BIH uh, webpage for uh, to receive updates. Um, can we put the web page on the screen? In the chat, we'll put it in the chat, but it's really easy. We're the Bhakti Vedanta Institute for Higher Studies, bihstudies.org, bihstudies.org. So um, we don't need a sign of Puta memory to get that one down. Okay. Um, I'm going to give a summary of the introduction later on. But first, we're going to have three special guest speakers to open this series by offering their realizations concerning the impact of Sada Puja's research, lectures, publications, uh, personal life. 
Uh, Sada Kunt and I would begin our regular morning breakfast meetings we had for years. We'd always begin it two ways. Then walk into the room and he would say to me, indeed. And I would go, indeed. And we'd go for several minutes of indeed, because that's what nerdy scientists always do with each other. So that was our way of having fun. And then I'd loosen up with the joke because it's my nature, and then we'd get down to business. And then we would always end it. So I'd say, well, what do you think of what we discussed today? And he would obviously answer, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, uh, so uh, the first uh, speaker, the, all these speakers had long intimate relations with Sada Now, they can't, two of them can't be here in person because they're in India. Um, one of them will be here in, uh, one of them will be here at, at, at live, but by Zoom. Uh, that's a read I not about because he's in Orlando. So, Jayad Wade Swami, uh, first he's an old, old dear friend and colleague of mine since 72. Uh, when I first met Jayad Wade, I couldn't pronounce these Sanskrit names. Jayad Wata? And it was very difficult for me. That hasn't changed much in 50 years. So um, I think I have a mild form of dyslexia because everyone Christmas time is chanting Noel, Noel, and I'm chanting Leon. So I, I can see that it doesn't quite fit. So uh, that was funny. Okay. So, but Tide Waiter, when I first met him, my wife had to come up with a name for him. So, our nickname for him was Smiley because he was absolutely happy. He looked happy in picture conscious. And I really got to know him well in 72. But in 1968, I was wandering in Greenwich Village, and maybe an 18 year old kid just wandering. I used to hang out in the village, and I saw this weird group of people in bed sheets and green socks and blue socks and jumping up and down. And I said, these are the biggest exhibitionists I've ever seen, or they're above it all. I didn't know which. And that was Jai Gwena Brahmacharya on the Sankirtan party, heading up the Sankirtan party. And I just stood there amazed. And somebody gave me a mantra card, said, your life will be sublime. I go, yeah. Somehow I took up the mantra and started chanting them. <laughs> Have you ever listened to a song on the radio and you can't get it out of your head like a, a commercial jingle? Yeah, and, and it's stuck. And so I credit that to Jai Dwayne Swami. His service in the movement, which continues, is quite illustrious. He was Prabhupada's most trusted editor. Uh, Prabhupada said it directly. I trust his editing. Everything he does, Jai Dwayne Swami, I, I just trust him. And uh, he was the editor, assistant editor for nearly all of Prabhupada's books. Uh, in 78, he became a sannyas. He was co founder of the Navid Institute of Higher Education, uh, a longtime director of the Book Trust, director of the archives, long, long time senior editor of Back to Godhead magazine. He recently wrote a book. It's a very good book. We have it in our library here. The book is called Vanity Karma. It's about Ecclesiastes. When Jai Kweta was 13 and a Jewish family getting bar mitzvah, he read Ecclesiastes. And when he read it, it's the weird book of the Bible. I mean, if you, have, you don't know Ecclesiastes, it doesn't fit in. It, it, it's talking about the futility of material life. It just doesn't fit in the way the Bible structure. Then at the very end, so, as if someone else added it. By the way, you ought to surrender to God. And he kind of brings it back. And when he read Ecclesiastes, he said, wow, this is me. I want to be a monk. You know, when he met the devotees, he became a monk. So that was his nature. Um, we, um, he's, he lectures extensively all over the world. He's a very popular speaker. And uh, uh, it's uh, very proud to uh, introduce him uh, to this audience. If we can begin 